All right, what's going on, everybody? Yeah, I, uh, we wanted to make a video for a while now, kind of talk about MotoGP in the 2011 season. I'm a pretty big fan of it. I have been for a few years now, and uh, I, I didn't really want to make one like this. It kind of sucks, but I guess I want to talk about Marco Sumicelli. Uh, as we don't know, you're not a fan. Marco Sumicelli was a pretty young MotoGP racer, 24 years old, who died in the last race uh, in a pretty bad accident. Uh, basically, I mean, you can see the accent if you want to look it up. I really don't want to see it again. It's been pretty hard to watch. Basically, though, what happens is he, uh, he was taking a hard uh, right-hand turn, and he lost it. He kind of started low-siding on him, and uh, it was low-sided. It was, it was sliding on his side. That was all the time. What the fuck are we doing? Oh, that makes sense. Slangians. Um, but yeah, he was low siding. I'm just gonna go in here. The traffic sucks. And uh, he did what you're supposed to do. He tried his damnedest to save it. He was sliding on his knee and his elbow. The bike's kind of underneath him sliding, and he's trying to hold it up. And uh, as he was doing it, it re gripped. And uh, it's, you're so lucky to get that to happen. Here's some giant dinosaurs if you can't see them. Yeah, this place is ridiculous. They make giant dinosaurs. Um, but what happened was he did get the bike to, 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 uh, to kind of regrip, and instead of popping back up, which will, you know, it, it rarely ever happens. You can really save it anyway. But what happened was it drug him sideways across the track very quick and violently into the path of uh, Con Edwards and uh, Valentino Rossi. It's over here. And, uh... Uh, the result was it was just bad. I mean, fucking Colin Edwards like hit him like square in the back, man. I mean, you just seen fucking bikes and people go tumbling. You see Marco Simicelli's fucking helmet came off. That's when you knew shit was really fucking bad. And basically, I bet it was just a fucking horrible wreck. I had a red flag to race, of course, because he's lying unconscious on the track. And... Uh, they fucking end up canceling the whole race. I mean, everyone gets back. Uh, uh, Hayden, I think they said just dislocated his shoulder. And we'll probably be okay. I mean, he might not hit the last race of the season now because of that. And, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Valentino Rossi, he just, he just, he didn't even go, like, he went off track, but he didn't, uh, he didn't actually wreck. He just, he just went off. Um, but man, he was looking back. I mean, he knew it was bad. He grabbed his helmet, was just kind of shaking his head, you know. Um, and they wouldn't they ever showed up any close up on Simichai, which is probably a good thing. I mean, they just kind of see like a zoomed out view of him lying on the track. You know, this is live. I mean, if it wasn't live, they probably would have even edited it to not even show that much. And. They, it, was, it pretty much sucked, man. It was a pretty shitty deal. But it, it was just such a bummer. I mean, this stuff hardly ever happens in racing, you know? There was there was a really bad indie race, or wreck, uh, I don't know what was over here. A really bad indie wreck just the other week. And, uh, it just, it, in motorsports, I mean, it's always possible, but it just, it doesn't happen like people think. Like you tell them, like, oh god, man, like this guy died in motorcycle racing today. And most people go, well, yeah, it's fucking motorcycle racing. But it's really not like that. It really doesn't happen that often. And when it does, it's almost the exact same thing every time as riders running into the person who went down. Not like the, uh, let's go over here. Not like, not like they're hitting anything else. It's riders that hit them. And it's never the rider's fault that hits the other guy. I mean, you know, he, it's fucking racing, man. They don't got anywhere to go. It fucking falls out and shit happens, you know? So. It definitely sucked ass. Uh, it's 
got to really be Shea for uh, Valentino Rossi. He, he's an Italian, so is uh, Simicelli. And, yeah, they've almost like, uh, Valentino Rossi almost basically been treating uh, treating him like a younger brother, Simicelli, you know? He, he'd be giving him advice and stuff, and they'd be hanging out. And um, a lot of people would say, oh, he's going to be like the next Rossi. I don't know if he's going to be the next Rossi, but I definitely believe he could have been a world champ uh, in his time. In fact, next year he was going to get a, he was going to go from the satellite Honda to the full ride factory Honda. If, if you don't know, that means the, the, the factory Honda is the always their, you know, all their effort balls out, best put in bike, and the uh, satellite bike is kind of like their hand-me-down bike, if you will. So, you know, he and he was super competitive with that bike. You know, again, he was faster than uh, factory Honda riders sometimes. So. You know, it's, he definitely deserved his chance on the factory machine. I, I, that's why I really do believe the way he rode it, he would have a good chance at uh, being world champ. Uh, but man, I mean, ever since I first watched him, like the first time I ever really saw him was back in 08 and 250. And that's the year he won uh, the, the, uh, the whole championship when he was in 250 that year. 250 doesn't exist anymore. It's Moto2 now, which is like 600 CC four strokes. But... Back when it existed, yeah, he, uh, I think he even got second on, on, uh, in 09, his last year in there. It was 2010 when he went to the Premier class, and, I mean, dude, he's just crazy to watch, dude. He's, he's pretty freaking tall. Most of the Italian guys, like the Spaniards and stuff, they're, they're just like them, they're, they're short, you know, they're kind of shorter guys. Not like little guys, but they're not big people. And, uh... This dude was, had to be over six foot, and he rode kind of like the Americans did, you know? Being a bigger guy, he didn't kind of muscle the bike over. He rode aggressive as hell, man. He was just balls out all the time. He put all his effort into it, man. Uh, I don't even think he knew what a warm-up lap was sometimes. But uh, it was real funny, too. He has this huge orange afro on his head, so on top of being like really, really tall for a, uh, for a MotoGP racer. He's got this huge afro that has to add like another six, seven inches on top of his head. So anytime you see a picture of the, uh, all the riders, they'd have to put him in the back middle because if they put him anywhere else, he'd be covering someone up or drawing the entire shot, the tension of the shot to the side. So he is definitely one funny looking guy. He was hilarious just in interviews and everything else. He was very, uh, very lighthearted guy, you know. Uh, but it was really his racing style that won me over initially. Just his, just so balls out style he has. And uh, this 2011 season had started out with kind of a lot of downs for him, you know. With, with that racing style, it's the go big or go home style, you know. He's he's wrecked out of numerous races where he was doing really, really good. You know, it's always like those. You watch his races and you're always going, man, if only he. You know, finished. If only he could have slowed down a bit, and he even started kind of getting in trouble early on in the season with some very kind of overly aggressive passes. Uh, yeah, there was there was a few riders, especially Jorge Lorenzo, that were talking a lot of shit on him. You know, uh, kind of wanting him to get in trouble, I guess, for the way he was riding. <laughs> there was a great little press conference between the two of them. They're up there talking to the press and. Well, hey, basically tells me, like, you do it again, you know, and you're going to get it or something. You'll see. And everyone's kind of sitting there quiet. And uh, so much he goes, yes, I will uh, I will be arrested. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, man. He was just so whatever about the whole thing. Oh, man, the wind was bad right there. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he kind of messed up, though, right after that because he uh, took out... Uh, Pedrosa in a race, uh, and he broke his collarbone, Pedrosa did, from a really kind of silly pass that Simicelli tried on him, didn't work out, <laughs> and uh, yeah, race officials apparently had to talk to him afterwards, and I think they kind of scolded him a little slap on the wrist, uh, but he really seemed to start turning things around not long after that. You know, Valentino Rossi, like I said, was sort of like a mentor to him, kind of, I think, I think he said he talked to him as well, and you know, I kind of let him know what was going on with that. Not that that was kind of a ridiculous move he made. 
after that, he kind of started turning things around, and they've been doing really, really good lately. Uh, it was just so cool to watch him. He got second in the race just before this last one uh, in Australia. It's a pretty cool deal. Again, remember, he's on a satellite bike in second place, so he's beating factory bikes. Bikes are supposed to be better than him. And the guy had such a bright future in front of him, man. I mean, he definitely would have won a championship. I really do believe he would have. His big thing I always said was he needed more patience, you know? More patience with his passes, more patience with uh, his pace early on in the race, you know, trying to go too hard, too quick. And, I mean, it looked like he finally was figuring that out, like he was, he was doing it. These guys looking at. But yeah, I mean, well, he was definitely, definitely a good guy to watch. He was, he was one of the most entertaining guys. Yeah, I rewatched the, uh, the race right before the accident, and it's kind of crazy. It's like for the only two laps they ran, like they were talking about Simicelli like 90% of the time, you know. And, sort of a proud way of, you know, they were kind of the, the, uh, the guys on the, at least on Speed Channel where I watch it on, which I'm, I'm thinking they're like the British, the guys who do it for the British, uh, whatever TV over there in Arizona too, they use the same commentators, but they just were talking, talking about Simicelli this, Simicelli that, and this road is closed, I don't give a damn. It was just super shame, like I said, to see him go. It kind of, you know, kind of just sickened you a bit when you found out what happened. But, I mean, that's racing, I guess. You know, it's, that's, that's, that's always the possibility with any kind of motor sport. You know, you can, you can follow your favorite football team and watch the quarterback grow and from college on up and, and, and really get, get to start, you know, being a big fan of, such and such quarterback and you might you might oh good old run out for me doggy you might you might in your life see that quarterback you know break his knee or something in some horrible way and never get to play again and you know heaven forbid but I mean that's that's about the worst you'll probably see maybe a couple back concussions but I mean death is certainly possible but it's so so unlikely but in, in motorsports racing it's definitely much more reality, you know, when you follow this sport and you kind of become attached to these people and you watch them grow and you, I don't know, it's, it, it really, it really hurts though when you see it happen, but so, it's such a weird freak accident the way it happened too. And like I said before, it really doesn't happen like you think it would. It's so far in between that accidents like that do happen and they almost always that same kind of accident of somebody getting ran into by somebody else, so certainly does suck. We'll remember him for all the uh, for all the good times he showed us and it's about the best he can do. Prayers with his friends and family.